This video is going to cover the topic of probability area models. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question of this video is what visual can we use to determine the probability of an event? We have seen several different ways to determine probability so far in this unit. In this video, we have one more, the area model. In the area model, we draw a rectangle or a square, um, that, and we cut it into pieces to represent the probability of a different event occurring. Using the picture here of our mountain um, and the question to the side, we see that we have Janichi, he likes to ski, and he has some choices, right? He could go down different paths. So we're trying to figure out the probability of him going to the ski lift, the lodge, or the shop. And we're going to use an area model to display these options and to see his probability. For an area model, we just need to draw a si simple rectangle or square, as I've done here, and we're going to break it up into parts. So the first choice Janichi has to make is if he goes down here to the right side, or down here to the left side. That's just two options to start with. So I'm gonna start by just breaking my box into halves. And one of those represents his option to go left and one represents his option to go right. If he chooses to go right, he can go down this path or this path and those will both take him to the ski lodge. Or he could go down a third option and that will take him to the ski shop. So there are three outcomes here, right? There are two different places he could go, but there's three different kind of paths he could take. So I'm going to break up my right section into three, hopefully equal sections. And I'm going to label two of the outcomes as lodge and one of the three options as shop. If on the other hand, he goes to the left, he could take a path that goes down the ski lodge or a path that, excuse me, ski lift or a path that goes to the ski lodge. So there are just two options there. So I'm going to break up that path into two different options. And again, I'll label them with the two places that he could go. So this visual now tells us the probability of all his options. However, these spaces are not the same size, so we can't compare them yet. And when I look at these, I see that I have thirds here. And I see that I have halves here. And I know that thirds and halves can both be broken down into sixths. So we're going to cut that into sixths everywhere. Which means this would get cut up again. This would get cut up again. And this would get cut up again. Additionally, our lift would be cut into sections with our lodge so that we have sixths everywhere. I now have 12 equal pieces in my representation here, and I know that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them go to the lodge. So that means the probability is seven out of our 12 spaces for the lodge. There are one, two, three sections for the lift, so that means it is three out of 12 for the lift. And there are two sections here for the shop, so that means the probability is two out of 12 for the shop. So that's one way I could figure out the probability. He has a 7 twelfths chance of ending up at the lodge, 3 twelfths at the lift, and 2 twelfths to the shop. In the other example that we're going to look at here, Javi has three buckets, and let's say we don't know which bucket he's going to choose or which marble he's going to choose, and we want to find the odds of him choosing either a red, a green, or a blue marble. So again, I'm gonna start by making an area model by making a quick rectangle. The first choice that gets made, the first random decision, is that he's going to choose from either bucket one, two, or three. So I'm gonna break this into bucket one, two, and three, right? That represents his first option that he has. In bucket one, he has three choices. He could land on red, red, or blue. In bucket two, he just has two choices. He could land in green or red. And in his last bucket, the only option he has is a blue marble. So again, this sort of represents the probabilities, but right now they're all in different sizes. So we have thirds again, halves, and this one's just 
one out of one, right? So we're looking for a common denominator, and the, this one would be sixths again. So we're going to cut these in all three parts into sixths. That means in this first one, we need to cut this into halves each, so we have six total pieces. We need to cut this also into sections, so there's six total pieces. And we need to do the same thing down here, so there are six total pieces. And now we can see how many of each color there are, and we can figure out the probabilities. Let's start with red, and I see there's a section here, 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 and here that all represented our red marbles. So that's seven sections, and I can count up that there are 18 total pieces to this model. So that's a 7 18 chance of getting red. For blue, I can see two sections here that are blue, and then this whole area down here, all six pieces are blue, so that means there's an eight out of 18 chance of Javi choosing blue. And there's these three sections here that represent the green marble, so there's a three out of 18 chance of getting green. And let me just double check, seven plus eight plus three is 18, so I know this is a valid probability model which means that if Javi had to make some choices randomly and he first was choosing a bucket and then choosing one marble from that bucket, he would have a 7 18 chance of getting red, 8 18 getting blue, and 3 18 getting green. So this video covered the topic of what visual we can use to determine a probability of an event. This is not unlike our uh, probability tree where we can figure out the different probabilities on each branch, but it's just another visual and it might be easier sometimes to use the tree and sometimes to use this area model. So we'll make sure we practice this a bit in class as well, but just know this is another tool for your toolkit in probability.